Welcome to Hope is Here. We were talking about how to wait well this week and looking at that question, why do I have to wait? And if you missed the first two programs, really would encourage you to go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org. That's hopeisheretoday.org. Or if you'd like to listen to podcasts, you can catch a podcast of all of our radio programs. Uh, they're available on whatever platforms you listen to podcasts. We're on all of those, so check that out. I also remind you that we have a YouTube page, Hope is Here, Then my name, Greg Horn, and most of the programs uh, are videoed and on YouTube, so hope that you'll check that out, and I also want to ask that you would subscribe to it. I also want to remind you we have a one-minute cup of hope that I do each day. You can find that on Facebook, and then we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram, Instagram, and we're on TikTok even. That's been one of the fastest growing areas of our ministry, TikTok, and just been so blessed because so many young people are telling me how much they like the TikTok One Minute Cups of Hope. I had a young lady come up to me in high school at a wedding I did recently and just said, hey, you're the Hope is Here guy. I watch you on TikTok. And it was just kind of uh, funny. And uh, she said, is that you? And I said, yes, that, that's me. And she said, I really like those, and thanks for doing those. And it just really, really encouraged me because sometimes I'm just like you. The enemy lies to me and says, why do you even do those one-minute cups of hope? Nobody's listening or watching. And as always, God at the right time sends somebody to speak a word of hope and encouragement. But I really want to encourage you to subscribe to TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us there at Hope Is Here Lex. That's Hope Is Here Lex, L-E-X. Well, we've been talking about why do I have to wait and how to wait well. And um, I love this quote by Mickey McCandless. It says, waiting is a spiritual discipline because it allows each of us to more fully experience who we are, the world around us, and the presence of God. Friends, the fact of the matter, we talked about this earlier this week, that to wait, you have to be strong, and it takes courage. But friends, it's also a spiritual discipline. And a lot of times we don't like that word discipline because we think of pain and suffering and sacrifice. And yet that's just true. If you're going to wait well, and it is a spiritual discipline. Uh, but the good news is it does fully allow us to experience who we are when we slow down and we get to see the world around us, where it's working and what's going on there. And most of all, friends, we get to see the presence of God, experience the presence of God when we wait well. I want to share with you today four benefits of waiting. We've been talking about waiting and uh, just looking at it backwards and forwards these first two days, but I want to give you four benefits of waiting today. I know a lot of you like to take notes when you listen. So uh, the first thing is it grows my faith. It grows my faith. A lot of times I don't like to grow my faith that way when it involves waiting. But you know what? I think we all, usually if you're a follower of Jesus, you're like at the beginning of the year, you say, you know what? As one of my New Year's resolutions, I want to grow closer to God. I want to grow in my personal relationship with Jesus. And friends, when I have to wait, it grows my faith. But we all have to make a choice. We either become bitter or better. We either draw closer to God or we draw away from God. And the enemy will do everything he can to make you bitter when you're in a season of waiting or to get you to draw away from God. And I'm so glad you're listening today, whether you just happen to hit scan on the radio and it came up on 99.1 FM or uh, you were just scrolling and you saw the podcast of this um, show up on social media Um you know, maybe somebody shared it with you, and I want to remind you what a great way to encourage people is to send them uh, a copy of our podcast, of these programs. You go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org, and do that. But the fact of the matter is we grow our faith when we're waiting, if we choose to. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. And friends, I think sometimes you know, God's like, Hey, I'm wanting to bless you, but I want to see if you really trust me while you're waiting. And I don't think God does it out of evil or just, you know, something that's not kind at all. Because that's not who God is. He's full of compassion and love and grace. Yet, friends, a lot of times, if we're honest, we sometimes take friends and family members for granted. And sometimes uh, God has to say, hey, you know, I feel like uh, really you kind of don't uh, 
value our relationship anymore. And maybe you're in a season of waiting because God's like, I'm wanting to see if you trust me, if you'll wait on me well. Rick Warren says, I want to change my circumstances, but God wants to change me. Ouch. You know, friends, a lot of times uh, our circumstances, we're asking God to change. We're tired of waiting, but God's wanting to do something inside us, inside our hearts. Um, you know, I've, I've heard him say before, too, that your greatest uh, womb will be what your ministry will result from. We've talked about this on Hope is Here, but nobody better to help somebody that's had cancer than um, you know, somebody that's being diagnosed. Somebody says, hey, I, I know what that's like to get that phone call from the doctor. I know what it's like to go through chemotherapy or radiation. Nobody better to help somebody that's been through a divorce than somebody that's been divorced. Nobody better to help somebody that's had to file bankruptcy than somebody stood, stood before a judge and had to do that. Nobody better to help somebody that's, unfortunately, one of the most horrific things you have to go through, uh, somebody that's had to bury their child. And you hear somebody doing that and you call them. Uh, it's been just amazing to see if through Hope is Her Ministry, I've connected with a lot of people that have lost loved ones by suicide and seeing how people want to reach out to others when they hear about that because it's just an experience that nobody should have to go through, but they want to reach out and say, hey, here's what I learned. Here's what helped me. Here's what I did that I wish I hadn't have done or I wish I would have done is learn from what worked well and what I wish I would have done differently. And, friends, that's one of the beautiful things about when we go through circumstances. God will use them for his glory if we will allow him to. And if we're honest, I mean, the waiting season takes selfishness out of us. We're all selfishness. We're all selfish. I know I am. And it's just part of the human, part of us being human, friends. But that's why God sent his one and son, Jesus, to model for us what he wanted us to be like. And as John chapter 3, verse 30 says, uh, this needs to be a daily prayer for all of us. Jesus must increase and I must decrease. And if we're not intentional about that, friends, it won't happen because the world tells us it's all about us, Right. I'll tell you something that's really helped me a verse when I'm in a season of waiting, and I know you've heard me say it often if you listen to Hope is Here on a regular basis. But Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and He will make your path straight. The second benefit of waiting is it gives us a chance to reevaluate our life and priorities. This is a chance to reevaluate our life and our priorities. You know, friends, I think that was one of the blessings of COVID, at least, for most people, not first responders and uh, the people in the medical field. My goodness. But it helped us slow down. Those people, unfortunately, did not. But, you know, Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. And unfortunately, fast forward now, almost two and a half years later, a lot of us are back to the same old treadmill just going all the time, that treadmill pace of life that never stops. And I want to encourage your friends to maybe say, you know what, while I'm in this season of waiting, I'm going to reevaluate my life and priorities. And, you know, if you want to see what your priorities are, look at your calendar and your checkbook, where you spend your time and where you spend your money. And uh, I've had a couple of friends that uh, have lost loved ones recently, parents, and uh, one's father and one's mother, and um, they, you know, they were just sharing really kind things with me about them, things that uh, they loved about them, they appreciated about them, other people were. And, you know, friends, we all want to know what would somebody say about me, what would be said about me at my funeral. And I just want to encourage you to maybe say, you know what, I want to reevaluate my life. I want those that I love to know that I love them. Make those phone calls, schedule that dinner, schedule that lunch, schedule that family gathering. Be intentional about it, friends, because if you're not, you'll look up. I can't believe it's already October. I mean, 2022 is almost over. But I think the Holy Spirit speaking to somebody listening today to reevaluate your priorities and make some time to spend with family and friends that you know you've been meaning to all this year. And it's just not happened. Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Just ask the Lord. Just say, God, I just want to see here 
right now, and I just want you to tell me, what is it that you're wanting to do in my heart, in my mind, in my life while I'm waiting? Please show me. And friends, he will. He loves to help his kids. He's a good, good father. I love this quote by Mark Patterson, a a pastor in Washington, D.C. I've read several of his books. Uh, He says, we usually focus on what we're doing or where we're going, but God's primary concern is who we're becoming in the process. Wow, that's so good. We usually focus on what we're doing or where we're going, but God's primary concern is who we're becoming in the process. Friends, when we're waiting, I want to remind you that God is more concerned about your who than your do. He's more concerned about who you are as a person, your heart, your mind, your words, your actions, okay, than what, what you're doing, what, what job you have, how well your kids behave, your grandkids, how much money you have in the bank, how many likes you have on social media. He is more concerned about who you're becoming in the process while you're waiting. A third thing that's a benefit of waiting that I found in my life is it helps develop the fruit of the Spirit in my life. It develops the fruit of the Spirit in my life. Most of you know those Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A good friend of mine, Pam, one time was sharing that they were preaching on patience and fruits fruits of the Spirit, and it was on patience that day, and they were saying, you know, it's the fourth fruit of the Spirit, so after church was over, they had a lot of things to get done, but they hit a drive through to get something to eat, and they placed the order, and it just seemed like the, long, the line was taking forever, and she was kind of getting frustrated, <laughs> and her daughter said, Mom, number four, and she looked at her, and she's like, Number four, I didn't order a number four. I ordered the number two. And she goes, no, no, number four, fruit of the Spirit, patience. (laughs) I love that. I've heard that story several years ago, and I still laugh about it because, you know what, sometimes I need number four. I need patience, especially when I'm waiting. And God does that when we're seasoned with waiting. I heard Joyce Meyer say, patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. I want to remind you, friends, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how we react to it. That great quote by Chuck Swindoll. How's your attitude while you're waiting? All right, so four benefits of waiting. One, it grows my faith. Two, it gives me a chance to reevaluate my life and my priorities. It helps me develop the fruit of the Spirit in my life. And last but not least, it helps me to remember who my real source is. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Friends, maybe this is a chance right now. God's just saying, hey, I want you to remember while you're in the season of waiting that I'm your source for everything. I'm your protector. I'm your provider. I love you. Okay, I know a lot of people we listen uh, are single, either uh, not married by choice or divorced or widowed. And so sometimes you feel alone. Or I know people that are married and, you know, they're not physically alone. Mentally and emotionally, they feel very alone. And I want to remind you, friends, that draw closer to Jesus. He is the vine and we are the branches. And when you do that, he will provide that comforter and that counselor to help you know that you're loved and help you to endure and even prosper when you're in this season of waiting. We're out of time, but I hope you'll join us again tomorrow as I'm going to share five takeaways during a season of waiting. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.